questi miei malati che ho qui in codice rosso non sono a carico tuo in tutto questo lo faccio mentre vedo altri 45 malati ma non avete capito che nel frattempo siamo rimasti pronto soccorso ti ho portato i cannoli Hello and welcome everybody to the 52nd edition of Vision du Réel International Film Festival. As you might know, due to the pandemic, the festival is taking place online, although some of the activities uh, will take place on site in Neon from the 15th to the 24th of April. Uh, I'm very glad and honored to be here with uh, Michele Aiello, director of uh, Io Resto Qui. My place is here. Uh, that we will present in our Grand Angle competition in world premiere. So uh, thank you, Michele, for being with us and welcome. And thank you for inviting me, of course. Uh, so Michele, your film has been shot uh, in the very midst of the first wave of uh, COVID-19 pandemic in Italy in a moment uh, that was very dramatic, uh, uh, in particular for uh, Italy, uh, your home country, and also, well, for the entire world that was uh, witnessing what was about to arrive uh, almost everywhere. Uh, so can you tell me uh, in which condition you start to shoot the movie? Yeah, um, it was a difficult situation, of course, because uh, uh, now it seems uh, very normal, the situation. But if you uh, th think about the first times when it, when it broke out, the pandemic in Italy, there was no uh, masks. Uh, there were no masks available to the common public, also in the hospitals. It was, they were they have shortages of the equipment, the, the PPE. Um, there was no alcohol to, uh, to sanify the, the equipment. So, um, but I, I, I needed to do this documentary and I began anyway to ask uh, some hospitals in, in Lombardy. Uh, which was the region that was most affected by, by the virus. And uh, when uh, the hospital of Brescia allowed me to enter, uh, it was at the end of March. I asked it uh, a few days, I asked the permission to enter a few days after the, the declaration of the lockdown by, by the Prime Minister Conte. But then it took a couple of weeks to let me in the hospital. So then when I entered, the situation was uh, a little bit calmer. So there was um, some, there was not so much shortage of the PPEs. So I could uh, ask the hospital to, to give me some. And uh, of course, uh, even if I was very willing to do it, I was a little bit scared and afraid of the virus as well. So we were very, Careful me and Luca Gennario came with me to film. Uh, so we tried to clean every time we entered and we went out of the world. We tried to clean the equipment. Uh, every time we entered a room, we were very uh, careful when we came out to, to clean everything. And also when we got home, that we decided to uh, stay in an apartment me and Luca together so that we couldn't uh, meet other persons because now and also at the time you, we were afraid, uh, we and other journalists that were able to, to have uh, a little access to the hospitals, we, we were also afraid of taking the virus and bring it in other places so, and so to our families. So uh, this was the main fear. Uh, and then, of course, it was also very complex, the situation, because there were lots of patients that were coming into the hospitals, uh, into the hospital, but then uh, some patients were moved from wards to wards. Uh, so um, it was difficult to follow some particular story. Uh, and, uh, and so I needed more time. So uh, at the beginning, I asked the hospital to stay for one week. Actually, I asked for two, but they gave me just one week to stay. But then after one week, I needed more time and I made them understand that uh, uh, I needed to stay more and with a little more access to other spaces of hospitals just to take the, 
gave to the story a little more a wider uh, look of the situation. And so when they gave me, they, they gave it to me, I was able to spend one month, 30 days in the hospital from uh, the last week of March to the first week of May. And how did you manage with your crew to work in such a difficult condition? How, I mean, you, you were saying that it was difficult to, to go to on board on board, but also how you were planning uh, what to shoot every day and how was the routine during the shooting? Yeah, it was uh, a little bit crazy. Um, I asked Luca Gennari to come with me because I, I, I already worked with him with another documentary uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, we knew each other uh, and, uh, and I know he is very, uh, he accepts also very risky situations because it was, uh, he went to Ukraine, went to uh, the Antarctic. So um, I called him and I asked and I said, look, I want to do this. I want to go to the hospital in Brescia. I have the permission. We want to come and he moved from, from Ravenna, the place in which he was staying at, at the time. And he came to me, uh, with me. Uh, so we were just two, the two of them, the two of us. Um, and at the beginning, I, um, we couldn't do rehearsals or uh, um, we didn't have the time to, to make a research on the ground. So from the very first day, we began shooting. Mm. And so we, we have a, a great amount of uh, shootings. Uh, uh, and it was difficult to follow a direction because as I said before many patients sometimes they were moved from uh, from from corridors and so you couldn't really follow their stories and uh, when a couple of days after we were in we realized that it was not uh, for us a story that could be told by a single person or a single story so we realized that it was a collective story uh, mm. and for this reason it's the documentary is uh, putting together lots of people lots of voices uh, and uh, not just one story of one patient or one nurse this was one of the biggest certainty that we had just a couple of days that we began filming but then of course it was difficult to, to choose mm. So sometimes we, we followed some people uh, who was more available to, to talk with us. Uh, and sometimes it was just an instinct just to go straight because there was uh, a glimpse of uh, something. And, you know, if you do a research on the ground, you understand who is the best person that you can follow that can tell you more things. Uh, but when you are shooting without a, re a research, I, you can also follow some some people that in the end uh, it's not uh, going into the command. And this was the case for many people who helped us in in, in sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rhythm, the rhythm of the day was very very tough because we 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 went we we, us we, we used to go there at eight o'clock in the morning, and we were coming. Uh, home at eight uh, or ten sometimes in in the night, and then the day after we began again. Also because it was when there was the full lockdown in Italy, uh, the virus was spreading less and less, so uh, the situation was getting very calmer in April. So we, we needed to shoot every day to, to mm -hmm. take all the, the scenes of that situation. And so once you finish, how did you organize during the editing all the stories and how you decided uh, which were the character that would inhabit the film? Yeah, it was a tough uh, phase uh, as well because uh, all the televisions were already producing documentaries on, on hospitals. I decided not, not to interview anybody because uh, 
I knew televisions and other broadcasters would have interviewed a lot of people after the pandemic. So I chose from the beginning to just film. So I have no interviews in my hard disks. Um, and it's just observation. So there are many scenes and many people in, in, the, in the footage. And I spent, I think, one, uh, one month and a half alone with, okay. all the, with all the days of the shootings in front of me. And I began selecting scenes and scenes. And then I edited like 40 minutes uh, uh, teaser, let's say. And I went to Corrado Yuvara, the editor with, with which I, I also worked uh, with the previous project. And he said, okay, let's work on it. Uh, you have lots of stuff. But, um, and so we worked together. And for September and October, we had already the a rough cut that, that then became the final film and that we will see it, uh, at Vision Durel. Uh, but I didn't, when I finished uh, the shootings, I, I didn't really know what was the story uh, still um, it was difficult it was too intense also emotionally uh, i had expectation at the beginning so when i came inside the hospital i found a different situation and uh, i had to adapt uh, every day to to create a narration and and for example some scenes that you see at the end of the documentary was shot the very first days mm -hmm. and some scenes that you see uh, in the middle were the very last uh, that I could, I would, uh, I wanted to, I was able to shoot. Thank you very much, Michele. Uh, and thanks again for sharing uh, with us and our public uh, uh, your rest of uh, I would like to remind to our uh, audience that the film will be available for 72 hours, that makes three days, uh, as well as the rest of the programming. Uh, so I wish you all uh, a great festival and thank you again, uh, Michele, for uh, being with us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>